So, um, uh, sorry, I just made a video on crossovers, but I forgot to tell you, basically the, I don't even use the word rule of thumb because I think rule of thumb came from the uh, idea that you can't beat your wife with any stick bigger than your thumb. So I don't like to say that. <laughs> it's kind of a fucked up rule. But uh, the general rule of cross, uh, crossing up uh, mids and tweeters, which uh, having a crossover on your mid and tweeter is, is critical. It's vital because you don't want to run that full range. It cannot handle that kind of energy. And so typically the uh, rule is one octave above the FS. So if you have a mid that plays it down to 45 hertz, typically you want to go one octave up, which would be halving. An octave is a halving or doubling of a frequency. So if it can play down to 45 hertz, you want to go up an octave, which would be 90 hertz. And so that's where you want to have the high pass filter. Now, how steep the filter is, is going to help you consider how much energy the, the, the speaker can take and under what the pass band will be under what frequencies. So the steeper the slope, the more energy it can handle because it's not, it's, it's playing the least amount of bass. In fact, if you go another octave above that, the mid will handle even more power and, and sound even brighter, but your compromise is that it won't have a large, a larger, a, as large of pass band, right? You'll miss that mid bass, right? Cause if you cross up at 180 Hertz, right? Or if you cross up an octave up, but the, the slope is, is, is more shallow instead of steeper. So that's the compromise. And so typically on a mid though, you want to go one octave up. Uh, if you want to play it safe, go an octave and a half. So uh, 45 hertz up to 90 hertz. And then another uh, doubling would be 180. So something about 150 to 120. And that's why I recommend a high pass uh, crossover at around 100 to 150. People always make that fucking crossover point too low. And then they wonder why they're blowing mids and things like that. So let your woofer do the heavy lifting. Your woofer has a huge magnet and a huge cone area and lots of excursion where your mids do not have that kind of thing. And so to ask them to be mid bases is, is a really tough task. And it's easier to let your woofer do the heavy lifting on that. So, but uh, I guess I'll label this one part one, part two. The same thing goes for tweeters though. Um, the tweeters, you want to do an octave above uh, the FS and typically a really good tweeter will have an FS of around a thousand Hertz. So you want to cross it up about two, maybe even three K. Um, again, it depends on your application. If you're doing something like a, a Doppelito, um, uh, alignment for home audio, which is a mid tweeter mid, um, there's certain characteristics when you're doing that arrangement of why you want a low crossover point. And in order to achieve that low crossover point, on a safe performance level, you want to have uh, a tweeter that can number one, take some good juice, maybe like 50 Watts. That's a lot for a tweeter. Uh, and then also have uh, a high enough crossover point that it helps it handle that power. And then also low enough so that it does the, the lobing that uh, comes with that sort of alignment. Uh, again, Loudspeaker cookbook, all this stuff is in there. Uh, I just happened to learn it in 1994 versus you guys, and I've been living it and practicing it for a very long time. So to me, it's a lot of just old information that I don't give a shit about because I already know. But when I run into uh, people that are poor and dumb and I try to explain it to them, it seems like it's very overwhelming and it's a lot to them. And so that's why I kick it back to you guys that you need to go to school and you need to learn. And not everybody learns from, uh, you know, not everybody is an observant student. Um, some people just want to crash and burn over and over and over again. And so that's why I, I push that. I don't, I don't have time for that anymore, really. And uh, if you want to crash and burn, then do it on your own fucking time, not on my time. So, but that's why I do the videos and that's why I try to help you the best I can. So this was really interesting. Uh, Jeffrey brought these in. Um, he, he got them for like free and these are the Maxwell. These are 330. Yeah. Three, no, 310, 310 farads. And this goes back to what I was talking about. Um, when you could put like two, there's a, there's a formula. I don't know what the formula is. You have to look it up, but there's a formula when you're just putting two in series together, it halves the value. So if you put these two, uh, capacitors in series, it'll be half the value of one, which is about 155. So it'll be 155 farads but it doubles the voltage. So, uh, which is great if you're, you're using capacitors for a higher voltage application than what the capacitor was originally made for. So, and you can do this in series parallel to depend on what voltage you, you needed to operate at and also what 
capacitance you needed to operate at. Uh, and so in this case, we're gonna be making a power bank with these. And these are 2.7 volts. So you wanna have about five in a series for uh, about 12 volts uh, or in that range of anywhere from 10 to 13 or 14 volts. You, you certainly don't wanna go over voltage because then you'll short them out. Uh, but I think these can take some good, uh, well, 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 I guess we'll find out. So if they can take a, a voltage higher than about uh, 2.7, but uh, typically you wanna play it on the safe side, especially with uh, capacitors, um, just because the, um, the insulating uh, material that they use, the dielectric, um, that is very sensitive to that voltage and that's why you don't wanna go above that. So cause you, what it'll do is it'll short through and uh, makes the capacitor worthless. So, but I think we're gonna do uh, five in series and then all these in parallel and it ends up being about 700 farad so which is not bad especially if you got it for free uh, but um, the problem is soldering to these and so we're going to do a little spot welder uh, which they sell from aliexpress but anyways uh one octave up on uh, mids and tweeters that's the rule the general rule, rule of thumb and uh just be nice to your fucking equipment man and it lasts like almost forever like that's what's great about selling audio equipment or even storing audio equipment is that it doesn't really age, especially if you keep it like, you know, in good air conditioned conditions and in the plastic, it'll last for virtually ever, like at least 10 years, if not 20 or 30 years. Um, everything's made of plastic or some sort of durable material. And, and uh, that's what's great about reselling electronics is it doesn't go bad like vitamins or makeup or any of the other things that people want you to sell. And so, um, I highly encourage you to do it at home. And again, in in line with uh, what we do at uh, Robot Underground is help people uh, make a thousand a week at home so that you can stay home with your family. So, oh shit. I just noticed I'm recording this sideways, but I hit record on the other way. So sorry you had to look at this sideways, but I love you. I will talk to you later.